have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And before we get started today, we have a couple of program notes for yes, you. We do. If you watch us on Free Speech TV, uh, we want to let you know that they're going into pledge mode uh, on September the 6th through the 25th. And during that time, they're going to premiere the show on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and repeat on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern and Saturdays, Sunday. Sundays at 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Eastern time. You got all that? <laughs> seven. Just One, keep seven. <laughs> Except nine on Friday. Right. Uh, and then they go back to regular programming schedule on September 26th, but we're grateful for all those airings. They like us. They really week. like us. Yeah. So we'll see how much you like us because we want to offer you an opportunity. We have decided we need some new substitute co-host not to get rid of chris cooper who we adore and love who him. is loyal and wonderful and here as uh, frequently as we need him but we think we ought to start working in a new roster of people in addition we're so, not getting any younger so if you watch this show and you say <laughs> i could do so much better than them <laughs> We want to hear from you. Send us a little audition tape of a few minutes. Uh, you have to be available to be in New York City on Wednesday afternoons to tape the show. And of course, you have to do what we do, which is spend 9,000 hours <laughs> a day true. rounding up the news by sitting in front of your computer or going to things. So if you're willing to do this, basically show us that you can do what we do and uh, make a and tape. And then we'll let you do it. Make a tape of up to five minutes tops. Uh, again, uh, send it to us. Send it to me, Andy at GayUSATV.org. Andy at GayUSATV.org. Um, that's, that's my email address. And uh, we'll take a look at it. Don't call us. We'll call you. And, of course, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background when you send along the tape. To us, the most important quality is some journalist savvy. Uh, preferably experience. We don't think you have to have a lot of TV experience. We didn't so much when we started. It takes time to get into it. But we are interested in your editorial content and how smart you are about the news. We, you don't have to be a clone of us, although right. of course that would be appreciated. <laughs> but, uh, but really we just want people who are smart and uh, curious about the world and willing to do the work necessary to do the show. Right. You could even do a, a duo if you want, you know, with someone else uh, sitting sure. at the desk. Give yourself a feel of it. Uh, get a friend to do it with you. You both don't have to apply. but uh, Even a blow-up doll. That, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I was watching Airport the other day with the blow-up doll right, right in the plane. Okay. All right. To the news this week. Yeah. Uh, lots of serious stuff. Yeah. First of all, there was a couple uh, of bad legal decisions. Well, there was a setback for the Obama guidance on transgender students. We'll explain that. Uh, but relief is on the way for transgender folks in California. There's a double entendre in that headline, which we'll get to. Uh, also, a federal judge in Michigan sets back the principle that anti-transgender discrimination is sex discrimination. We're up to about 50 lawsuits against Catholic institutions that discriminate against gay people. There are two new ones, one in New Jersey and one in Virginia. They're being sued by gay and lesbian employees. And who says that conversion <laughs> therapy doesn't work? An anti-LGBT mayor has found a reason to embrace LGBT rights. Uh, we're going to show you a video of of neighbors rallying for a lesbian couple who were uh, vandalized in, uh, how do we say this? Natick, Massachusetts. There it is. <laughs> uh, reports of anti-LGBT violence from New York City to Alabama. Uh, the lesbian legislator who voted against same-sex marriage in Hawaii, well, she lost her primary. 
What a shame. And the aforementioned Chris Cooper has sent us an extensive report from the FlameCon convention in uh, Brooklyn this last weekend. So we'll show you some of his pictures and talk about that. So we start off in Texas. Yeah. Now, we've, we've told you over the course of the last year about how uh, President uh, Obama has issued guidance for local school districts who are wondering how do we handle transgender, guidance for transgender students. Not rules, not a law, not even an executive this order, just upset guidance. This upset a lot of people uh, in uh, some of, uh, in Texas and uh, many, many other states who want to sue over this. Well, there are two major lawsuits. Uh, the one we're about to tell you about had 11 states joining together to sue to stop these guidelines from being uh, enforced uh, in school districts around the country. There's another separate lawsuit for another approximately dozen states. So in this case that we're going to tell you about, the virulently anti-gay attorney general of Texas, Ken, uh. Ken Paxton, looked for a, a district that didn't have any problems with it, but were, were, were problems around transgender students, but picked them uh, in North Texas, I believe. And uh, he was looking for a, a very anti-LGBT judge, uh, and he found one in Reed O'Connor, a George W. Bush uh, uh, appointee, not so all he, of whom are bad. He got the schools to adopt a binary bathroom rule that uh, forbade transgender students from using the bathroom corresponding to their lived gender. Show your birth certificate. <laughs> exactly. That's outrageous. And then uh, in anticipation body, of the federal government objecting to that, went into court to get a an injunction against enforcement of the Obama administration guidelines, which they had not made any attempt to enforce. No. No, the judge uh, says this is a nationwide injunction against this thing. Uh, he Which he has no power to do. He also said that the Department of Education and Justice failed to show uh, proper, uh, follow proper legal procedures before issuing the guidance in May. This is so he's trying to be technical about it. Well, that is the basis of his decision that there was no public comment process. Well, since it's not a regulation right. and it's not a law, it doesn't require a public comment process. This is the administration issuing guidelines. And because many local school districts were seeking guidance on this because they were getting sued on, on a local level by students who were, you know, running wanted a, access to who wanted uh, access, yeah. and those lawsuits, by the way, Gavin Grimm among them, are still going forward. Are not affected by this, although the courts may look at this decision, uh, but uh, well, th they're not affected. I mean, the the Texas judge who did issue this injunction against enforcement of these guidelines. Uh, previously tried to stop same-sex couples from having access to family medical leave uh, benefits from the federal government. He and we told you last even after same-sex marriage was legalized uh, before yes, and after, after I think right. but uh, he we told you about this case having a hearing last week or the week before and him assuring the Attorney General that uh, don't worry I've almost got this opinion written already in the midst of the hearing, he says to, this, the, to the Attorney General. ex parte communication, and it's <laughs> illegal. So this is uh, certainly an outlier judge. There's no reason to believe that this will ultimately have an effect on any actual national rulings on the issue of whether trans students should have access to... It just poisons the public atmosphere, which is what they intended. Exactly, and it gives them hope and gives them something to uh, yell about. But it's discouraging, certainly, to trans students and their parents and uh, all educators who are trying to do the right thing. But and our friends at Lambda Legal said, look, this is one judge, School districts are still obligated to treat transgender students fairly under Title IX, which forbids sex discrimination. Exactly. And there are other court precedents in involved in these cases. Yeah. Now, in terms of Title IX, uh, or Title VII, actually, of the uh, Civil Rights Act, we have another dicey decision in Michigan. Yes, this is this is a little complicated. It is. Well, well it's another technical decision that uh, relies more on uh, uh, the judge saying, well, if the person had brought this case instead of the EEOC, then there would have been different grounds, and maybe I could have decided differently. The person in question is uh, a 
Amy Stevens. Yes, so we have a picture of her. We do. Uh, she worked for a funeral home, yes? Yes. And uh, essentially, this case was brought by the EEOC. Yes. Uh, well, they first ruled in their uh, forum that she had been discriminated against by the uh, funeral home when she announced she was transitioning and they said, oh no, we don't like that, uh, you're fired. So the EEOC found for her and then the EEOC went into federal court to uh, bring a claim against the funeral home on her behalf. And Judge, U.S. District Judge Sean Cox uh, said that the uh, forcing the funeral owner to accommodate her would impose a substantial burden on its ability to conduct business in accordance with its sincerely held religious beliefs. I don't know where that comes in. Uh, and this is all a result of the Hobby Lobby decision, which allowed private businesses to have religious beliefs, uh, something that previously we would not have imagined possible. But perversely, the court found that, that, that uh, Ms. Stevens would have a valid Title VII cl claim against the home in the absence of a using a RIFRA defense, a Religious Freedom Restoration Act defense. Well, the Hobby Lobby case also says that uh, for the uh, business to succeed in its defense against a discrimination claim uh, and to be able to assert that it has a religious right to discriminate, the uh, claim of the employee must uh, impose a substantial burden on the business, not just offend the owners and their religious uh, beliefs, but impose a substantial burden. Because this was about things like pain for birth control. Well, how does uh, a transitioning employee impose a substantial burden on this funeral. Well, home. I'm not trying to be uh, glib, but you've got people like the Pope saying that uh, acceptance of transgender is like nuclear war and things like that. Oh, okay. So, I no, so religious, yes. no religious groups. Why do religious groups have any problem with transgender people? I, you know, I don't know. Well, but it seems to send them screaming from the does. room. Well, because there, a lot of religion is based on. Uh, very strict gender roles and mm -hmm. all those things. Uh, you know, God is a male, all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Well, nonetheless, these are two bad decisions in Texas and Michigan, but they are technical decisions and they don't necessarily have long term implications. The Michigan decision did include a finding that uh, Title VII does not protect uh, transgender people under the rubric of sex discrimination, but that, again, is just one decision. And we were doing fairly well on that front with transgender people, being, that being seen as sex discrimination. Of course, we're trying to also expand that to sexual orientation being considered yeah. sex discrimination, et cetera. So, and the right wing never rests. Uh, they also want to file our, our, our new lawsuit saying, uh, that providing transgender people health care violates religious beliefs. And this is, again, a multi-state uh, an uh, suit against the uh, uh, you know, uh, Health and Human Services Department in this case. Which um, did issue regulations saying that you cannot discriminate against uh, transgender people in health care. Uh, uh, because that's sex discrimination. I mean, and, uh, joining the states are the Christian Medical and Dental Associations, the Franciscan Alliance, which is a Catholic hospital system, saying they object to providing services or even referrals for transition-related care or providing insurance that covers such care because uh -oh. it violates their religious beliefs. They're all getting so clever. This is the little sisters of the poor charity or whatever saying they can't even provide referrals for uh, birth control or, or sign a paper saying they're not providing it. Wasn't Jesus very nice to eunuchs and, uh, and other sexual minorities? I, I do not want to... Uh, 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 okay. That's what I accept that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, and continuing with uh, religious discrimination and uh, legal issues, we go to... Paramus, New Jersey. Okay. Well, <laughs> this woman, Kate Drumgoul, she had gone to Paramus Catholic High School. She rose up in the ranks. She became uh, the dean of guidance in, in four years. She became the head coach of the Lady Paladins basketball team. And she's head of guidance so she's kind of discreet about her personal life mm -hmm. uh, because she says, look, I have to counsel them. I don't want them thinking about who I am personally and all this kind of stuff. So she's she's married to a woman, but she's discreet about it. She we talk. showed a picture of her she, with, and her wife. She doesn't talk about it. But 
she has a fight with her sister-in-law and her the sis wife's sister and her sister-in-law goes after her uh, and tells everybody and they get Posts it on Facebook they get, sends it to the school they get rid of her and she says I'm bringing suit over this because look you've got uh, uh, well, you're in New you, Jersey. You have a non-discrimination law that protects people on the basis of sexual orientation. Several faculty, she says, are divorced. At least one has a child outside of marriage. <laughs> uh, various employees cohabitate with members of the other sex. And at least another teacher is gay. <laughs> and nude photographs of another teacher have been circulating online. She puts all this in her suit and <laughs> says, why me? with just trying to lead my life with my wife. Well, the problem is that hypocrisy is not against the law, <laughs> and the school can pick and choose as it wishes. We'll and, see uh, about that. Well, this is the thing. The school says she's married to a woman that violates our Catholic doctrine and beliefs. She works for a church, Catholic <laughs> high school, uh, and therefore we're allowed to fire her and she says I am not a minister I am not teaching religion class I have nothing to do with that and your uh. and the uh, religious liberty clause does not protect you for to fire me she got a lot of support from the ex coach I'm not seeing what happened in Seattle where the students walk out of school in support of her uh, I don't know I don't know uh, how we'll much see. support she's getting from the community but uh, there is some speculation that she was fired as retaliation for uh, reporting employees sexual abuse of students on yes. a field trip yep. uh, so they really don't want her around <laughs> but uh, they the school went to court to get a uh, what's the word um, injunction or no or the uh, the immediate decision uh, oh, uh, get it thrown out of court. Yes and the court said no we're Dismissed. we're letting this uh, case continue yes. Uh, so we'll see what happens, but, uh, but the, again, this is, a, uh, this is the question. What are the limits of religious organizations' ability to discriminate? Yes, and the same thing is happening, or similar thing is happening in Richmond. Now, this is not Virginia. A, this is not a school. Um, this is a guy who was executive, John Murphy, was executive director of the St. Francis Home in Richmond. He went through all these interviews to get this job. and A home for the aged. Eight days into the job or something like that. Yeah. They find out he's been ma he's married. He's in a same-sex marriage. They say it's antithetical. He was invited to an event uh, run by the archdiocese or something uh, and told he could bring his wife. And he said, I don't have a wife. I have a husband. And they said, oops. A partner of 30 years, by the way, who yeah. we married. And when he told uh, the, the supervisor there, uh, she, she, her initial reaction was she shrugged and said, well, it's 2015. You know, but once the uh, higher-ups got a hold of it. Uh, well, the religious leaders, the, yes. the, the board of directors didn't care. And in fact, many of them have the bishop, the bishop who really insisted yes. that he be terminated. Yes, the board is threatening to resign over this uh, in support hope. of him. He's asking for $750,000 and attorney's fees. Uh, the least he's due. All right. Uh, in Illinois, the Supreme Court there says a lesbian ex-partner of another woman cannot sue for equitable distribution of property yeah. when they separated because they're not married. Well, they now, have an arcane law in Illinois. Yes, about this. Uh, most other. I call it the Judge Judy law because if you go into Judge Judy's court and ask for some adjudication of a partnership uh, disagreement, she says you're not married. You can't come before my court. Well, okay, but most states do, in fact, adjudicate such situations, but the Illinois Supreme Court refused to. Uh, in Fargo, North Dakota, a settlement was reached in a tr trans employment discrimination case uh, brought by Faye Seidler and uh, the Sanford Medical Center against the Sa Sanford Medical Center. She was discriminated in the workplace and uh, um, they uh, have settled the case. And there's a case settled in Long Beach, California, one of those barber shops that said uh, they would only serve men. And when a trans man went in for a haircut, uh, he was told, you're a woman and we will not give you a haircut. 
Well, now the case has been settled and the barbershop will have to serve everybody, male and female, and all, everybody, no matter who they are, and will have to pay damages to the okay. uh, trans men they discriminated against. Uh, more good news from California where they passed a bill that would uh, it allow, or no, and require when you have single serve restrooms that they be multi-gender. Yes. It could be for anybody. Uh, uh, sing, uh, this is for single occupants. This is for businesses as well as government buildings. That is the explanation of Andy's uh, headline that said relief was on the way in yes. California. It is a relief. Uh, in uh, Kentucky, the court has dismissed remaining damage suits against uh, clerk Kim Davis, who didn't want to sign marriage certificates for same-sex couples. This is basically a technical cleanup, but Liberty Council is saying, Kim Davis has won! <laughs> well, in their place, I might say the same thing. Can we show them, <laughs> the, can we show them the video from Natick? Natick. Didn't I say it right? Yes, but you sort of, you, said, you pronounced it like uh, Donald Trump pronounces <laughs> L-G-B-T-Q. Thanks a lot, Ann. <laughs> Natick Mass, a lesbian couple, longtime uh, residents in the neighborhood, had a one of those rainbow flags that says peace on it. It's actually a European peace flag. They had that hanging out, and they went away for a few days. Well, and let's they came. see what happened. Okay, let's see what happened in Natick. Carrie and Lori Riding put up a flag like this after the mass shooting in Orlando. They came home from vacation, and it was gone. Lori noticed that our whole front of our house had been egged. And some of the eggs. Heartbreak. Like, how could this happen in our neighborhood? It's just a mess. For anybody to do this, to anybody, it really is hard to feel like someone hates you. The married couple has lived in this Natick neighborhood for years, a neighborhood where they felt accepted. I don't want this to happen to anybody else. It's just, is it just vandalism? Is it a hate crime? Is it just pranksters? So they filed a police report fearing the vandals might come back, but it's what neighbors did that made them feel safe. One by one, families put up their own flags. Now roughly two-thirds of homes here have one. The first thing actually when I heard about it I thought of was, all right, I'm going to put up a flag, and we should all put up flags. The ages of 5 to 16, they were all out, you know, on their bikes you know, for over delivering an flags. hour delivering the flags. It's wild. I mean, you just fill up with tears driving down the street. Can't speak. It's overwhelming. Yeah. It's overwhelming, the support. A strong message from a neighborhood united. If people want to do that, they're just not going to be welcome in our neighborhood, and I hope this is a good sign to that. Very nice. Very sweet. Very and sweet. And that's what needs to happen, folks. When you see discrimination, close ranks, support your neighbors. I have to Any say. Any kind of discrimination. When I first started to read this story, my first reaction was, ah, kids in the neighborhood, you know, tore the flag down, egged the house. And then I get to the rest of it, and kids are riding around the neighborhood handing out these flags, right. and I, I felt ashamed see, of myself. I, yeah, I Kids I are people, it. too. Evidently. Uh, of course they are. And another example of closing ranks, we told you that the NBA uh, moved the All-Star game out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina because of their terrible law. Well, they're moving it to New Orleans yes. for 2017, the All-Star game. Because they have full non-discrimination protections. Yes. And I, let's talk about what's going on, speaking of uh, basketball, what's happening in San Antonio. We've told you about their mayor there. Uh, her name is Ivy Taylor. Uh, we have a picture of her. Uh, she won, and she was the anti-gay candidate. She said discussing LGBT rights protections was a waste of time. She voted against the LGBT rights ordinance, called it a political stunt. Well, this week, she's <laughs> speaking out against the Texas legislature, trying to pass a law like they have in North Carolina, like HB2. And why? Because she's worried about San Antonio uh, hosting, being able to host the 2018 Final Four. The so NCAA basketball tournament. has gotten religion. <laughs> well, we'll take it any way we can get it. Absolutely. Welcome, Ivy. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I think we should get to some... Well, let's do a couple of other political stories, as long as you mention the mayor. In South Carolina, I remember the lesbian police chief, Crystal Moore, who yes. lost her job and then got it back with a lot of community support. I do remember her. Uh, she is uh, running to be the first female sheriff and first out lesbian 
sheriff in Dillon County, South Carolina. And, uh, you know, this is not uh, New York City, and she's getting a lot of support, and we will keep an eye on her race. On the other hand, you may remember when Hawaii passed same-sex marriage, uh, the state representative who's an open lesbian, Joe Jordan, voted against it. She said it, her constituents weren't for it. Well, she lost her Democratic primary to a man who wasn't even supposed to be on the ballot. Uh, <laughs> yes, because he was a Green Party member, but, but he registered it's too late. Democrat. Well, now the Republicans are saying maybe we can get this seat. <laughs> no. That's what they're trying to do. Uh, and in Alaska, the assembly of the city of Juneau has passed a sexual orientation and gender identity non-discrimination law. Unanimously. No, eight to one. Oh, sorry. Okay. Close. Who, who did? Who, who did that? <laughs> Um, the military is now going to cover trans-related health care for families of service members. Uh, uh, but not transition-related surgery, I think. For, no, no, not for, and uh, the new policy still won't cover gender confirmation for military dependents. Right. Right. Uh, I think we have to move to yes. violence. Well, unfortunately, yes. Yes, all right. Uh, terrible story in the Bronx in New York City. Ugh. Where have I got that? Um... Marcus Bellamy is a dancer. Uh, that's once, that's once, the victim. That's but the victim. Yes, the victim yes. is Bernardo Almonte. That was his partner who yeah. Marcus Bellamy killed. Marcus Bellamy was in Spider Man Turn Off the Dark, uh, uh, 32 years old. So, but he, <laughs> God, he does, he kills the lover. He says, I did it for love. I did it because I love you, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I am God, all this kind of stuff. So he sounds a little off kilter. Um, Anyway, bad story. Horrible, horrible, horrible. In uh, Florida, uh, a trans woman, Stacy Neighbor, hanged herself in solitary confinement in a men's prison, Dade Correctional. She had been refused the opportunity to serve in a in the women's prison. Her name change was refused. She was just totally discriminated against, and she ended up hanging herself. And let's put up the picture of, uh, uh, from uh, New York City of Omar Villa Lobos, 25 years old. He's in Bryant Park, right there in the heart of Manhattan. Right behind the New York City Public and Library. And a guy who's kind of crazy shouting anti-gay slurs beats him to this way, uh, injures, him, injures him severely. So he and his friend, uh, th we're not even sure that the guy is gay. They're shouting anti-gay slurs at him, uh, homophobic slurs. They go to the police, and the police say, we're here to fight terrorism, not, 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 you know, uh, not, not what you're going through. And they won't do anything about it. And, and they keep pleading with the cops to grab the guy. The guy is still standing right there. It's not like they have to chase him because he's a crazy guy. So now and the cops say, oh, they're just going to put him in mental unit for a few days and let him go. So they don't want to do the paperwork. Right. And then uh, they, they say, okay, that's not good. There'll be, an, there'll be an investigation. We'll try to find this guy now, but we're not probing the police officer's behavior. Yeah, this is other units of the police right. department who agree to look for the crazy guy. Oh. Tuscaloosa? Yes. Okay, we have a video from Tuscaloosa about, a, 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 again, a, a, a gay bashing where we don't know the sexual orientation of the victim in this case. But, but let's go to the... bashed as gay. Yes. Night out turns into a nightmare. Now he wants justice after some men allegedly beat him up because they thought he was gay. Good evening, I'm Lee Garner. And I'm Jim Dunaway. This incident happened outside of the Green Bar in downtown Tuscaloosa late Friday night. CBS 42 reporter Stefan Dingle has been investigating this story for us. He's live now where the incident allegedly took place. Stefan? Uh, Jim, good evening. Last Friday, Johnny Bishop was leaving the green bar just behind me with a friend, and that's when he said two men stopped him right here and asked him if he was gay. The two men exchanged words, and that's when he said he was attacked from behind. Was holding him down on the ground and was hoping that this whole thing was over at this point when the other uh, assailant came at me, blindsided me yet again from the other side, hit me twice in the face. Johnny was walking with his friend Kat that night. It's been a very inconvenient spot. <laughs> she says she was thrown to the ground by one of the men as she tried to help, especially after a third man joined in the attack. He was bleeding so badly, 
At this point, I'm not sure where the, the third guy was. Um, and about that time, they drove out of here in the SUV with the girl driving. She had the window down and was kind of looking at us and smirking. Police showed up shortly after the incident as Johnny's face bled. One of the men stayed at the location as well, but police didn't arrest him because they say they didn't see the assault. That's when Johnny frustratingly shouted at his attacker. You need to get rid of the hate in your life. I yelled that loudly, at which point the officer did, he did threaten to arrest me for disorderly conduct at that point, which I found to be unbelievable also. Extremely dramatic. I'm scared to go to my favorite bar now. I'm scared to go to any bar in Tuscaloosa now. For Johnny and Kat, Tuscaloosa is home. But they say their backyard is littered with those who wear hatred as a badge. Now, Johnny Bishop was able to uh, work with investigators here in Tuscaloosa, and just this evening, they were able to obtain an arrest warrant for one of those suspects. Obviously, as this thing develops and we learn more information, we'll be sure to keep you up to date. We're live in Tuscaloosa tonight. tonight Stefan Nagel, CBS 42 News. We do need the police to take these things more seriously. Uh, in Queens, New York, a trans woman was hit in the head from behind uh, with a hammer on the street, just guy, walking along. Six o'clock in the morning, guy crept up behind her and said, this is what you get for being gay. Uh, there's, uh, uh, by the time you've seen this, there will have been a rally out there at five o'clock on Thursday uh, in Woodside, Queens, uh, in support of her. It's just everywhere, and uh, and even not here, it uh, it rebounds here. A bisexual Jamaican man uh, who was in Jamaica shot, stabbed, rejected by his family, gay bash, stoned, robbed, uh, married a woman for protection, uh, applied for asylum here in the United States, uh, saying, I'm bisexual. Uh, I, this is everything that's happened to me in Jamaica. It's not safe. I need asylum here. If you send me back, it will be a death sentence. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals has rejected asylum for him and said, we don't believe you're bisexual because you married a woman. They don't even know, uh, as Judge Posner, who was the dissent in this, and he's our friend, he's a Republican, who's our friend, he says, you don't even know, under, seem to understand what bisexuality is. Wow. Uh, uh, the L.A. Galaxy Major League Soccer player Robbie Rogers is out gay. He returned uh, f uh, from uh, after an injury, I was playing a game, and somebody on the opposing team, uh, uh, the O.C. Blues in the United Soccer League, uh, kept calling him queer repeatedly <laughs> during the game. So they are uh, investigating that. They will not tolerate that. In the realm of sports, uh, one of our viewers thought I did not give adequate uh, credit to the WNBA's Liberty uh, New York City basketball team last week when I was talking about the New York Mets having the first uh, pride night for a major league men's sports team in New York. Uh, if I left out men's or major league or whatever, uh, uh, I certainly apologize. I'm well aware the Liberty has been doing Pride Nights for many years, but the men finally got on board with the Mets this year. Yankees, Rangers, Knicks, Nets. On Sunday, uh, August 28th, there's going to be a commemoration of the 50th anniversary. This is pre-Stonewall of the Compton's Cafeteria Riot. At, in San Francisco at uh, Baydecker Park at 1 p.m. 295 Eddy Street. Uh, and Charlotte, North Carolina had its much anticipated Pride March this last weekend. They had a huge turnout, including 10% uh, of the marches were churches and yep. choirs supporting LGBT rights. Uh, and, of course, there was the local uh, religious right hater, Flip Benham, on the sidelines with a microphone yelling and <laughs> screaming stuff. But a very, very successful Pride March in uh, Charlotte. I love these stories about shows of solidarity. Yes, exactly. Uh, and in Kansas City, uh, an out lesbian minister, uh, Cynthia Meyer, who came out as a Methodist minister earlier this year or maybe last year, yes. has now stepped down rather than face trial in <laughs> Methodist court. Come you know? on, Methodists. 
Oh, well, I think Hillary has to be asked about this. She, she is. She's Methodist. a big Methodist, and she. Well, you know, Tim Kaine's a big Catholic. Yeah. Uh, you know, but he supports abortion rights. Uh, you know, so and how, LGBT how, well, rights, and right. so does she. And uh, but I think it would be nice if she, as a Methodist, made a statement yes. about her church discriminating. Yes, I, think I don't they doubt her support of LGBT I rights, but I think she could be should. helpful. Okay. The University of Geneva has issued a new study. It is teeny tiny. They, you know, a couple score people they looked at homophobia and impulsive attraction to the same sex. This is the ongoing debate about are uh, the people who hate us really just running away from their own feelings? Homophobic men linger over gay images longer <laughs> than non-homophobic men. I, I tend to think, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, the goal is to normalize same-sex attraction for uh, anybody who feels that and, and in the mind of those who don't. There's also a new study that the study, I put in quotes, that the right wing is touting oh, that well. says, oh, there is no evidence that uh, there is any innate uh, sexuality. And I'm thinking, really? <laughs> are, are you willing to blow up heterosexuality, yes. too? Uh, that's quite a leap. Well, don't forget it was homosexuals who coined the term heterosexual. <laughs> uh, and homosexual came first. Yeah. Uh, WikiLeaks is under fire because they exposed a trove of cables that exposed a lot of people's medical information and including the, uh, the publishing the name of a Saudi citizen arrested for being gay. The point is they're not taking care with the releases and some of this information can get people killed. Well, they're, you know, they're quite rigorous about not caring about well, anything other than releasing information. Well, there's they, they there should be limits to that. Well, they're not. I'm all for to transparency, look at expose yeah. government secrets when they're sinning, all that stuff. I am. Yeah. You know, all right. Uh, Olympic, Olympic news? Yes. Well, uh, well, we criticized NBC for not uh, mentioning Dustin Lance Black, even though they took shots of him in the stands when Tom Daly was diving. Well, they, they made up for it by doing a little profile of one of their little video, you know, feel good stories on Tom Daly and included the information that he was engaged to the Oscar winner Dustin Lance Black. But the right-wing Christian Voice site said uh, turning gay doesn't seem to have done Tom Daly any favors at Rio. Well, of course, he did win a gold medal in the synchronized thing, but he, but he didn't do well in the individual. Um, and J.K. Rowling came to his defense saying, I can't decide what is more offensive in this tweet, the stupidity or the spite. Uh, out LGBT athletes at the Olympics won 14 medals of one sort or another, and that turns out to be more than any uh, medal count from any country that outlaws <laughs> gay that? sex. How about that? Are we going to go a little out of order with images and put up Helene and Helen and Kate here? Sure. Okay. If you hope the control room can get a hold of that, because we have the we have Helen and Kate Richardson Walt. Uh, there uh, they are. Yeah, uh, they want to. They're they're together. They're married, and they won a gold medal in women's field hockey in, Grit, in Great Britain. Um, uh, they are the, the first same-sex married couple to win medals together in the Olympics. Now, of course, what are you know? How many? Uh, how possible was that in recent years? Not much, but right. congratulations to them. As an old field hockey player myself. I feel okay. very proud of them. Continued mess in Australia uh, over this same-sex marriage thing because we really are getting to the point where, uh, you know, you've got a conservative government that wants to have a plebiscite on same-sex marriage and enough people in the other parties uh, and are saying, we're not even going to vote for the plebiscite. You, we want a vote and we're not going to vote for a plebiscite, the, uh, which would cost $160 million and we're just not doing it. Our side wants a vote in Parliament. Yes. The uh, liberal right wingers who are in power, who that's have the name the of the party, the liberal yes, party, uh, don't want to allow a vote in parliament because they're in coalition with real right wingers who don't want it to happen, and they will lose power if they allow the parliament vote. So they want to shove it off to uh, a popular vote to create a mandate, so they don't have to take responsibility. But for they're this. not promising to vote for it if uh, our side wins the plebiscite right. as expected, if it was held. Yep. And our side is basically saying, "Don't we have it? First of all, we haven't had a plebiscite in Australia for." 100 years Whoa. on anything yeah. and these things and it's expensive and it tears the country apart because it pits neighbor against neighbor and it gets very ugly we already know how everybody feels yes so, so don't do it 
So the, the our side uh, says, forget the plebiscite. We just want the parliament vote. We're not going to vote for a plebiscite. We're, we're going to hold out for a parliament vote. Now, that's a risky strategy because they may not be able to pull off getting the parliament vote, and then we're stalemated for more years. Well, it so. becomes an issue, though. I mean, uh, but that's the way it should issue. be done. Yes, uh, ultimately it should. Because, you know, that's, that's the Republican form of government. And in Poland, five couples who were refused uh, same-sex couples who were refused marriage uh, licenses have filed an appeal with the European Court of Human Rights to try to establish uh, same-sex marriage rights in Poland where well, the only the only countries that don't have any any rights for couples are Bulgaria Latvia Lithuania Romania and Poland 61% of polls still oppose it. In El Salvador, a lawsuit has been filed to overturn the ban on same-sex marriage. See, this is spreading everywhere in, to countries where you would least expect it. In Nepal, you know, they've got a constitution that says they're supposed to be protected, LGBT, but uh, they're saying it's not being enforced, so they had a big march, and the U.S. ambassador to Nepal, Elena Teplitz, was a participant. Joined about a thousand people in uh, marching in Kathmandu in the annual Pride March. Yep. Uh, in Mexico, however, the religious right is organizing big marches uh, in the next month or so against the advance of same-sex marriage there. But bad news from Turkey, and we have a picture of this trans woman activist sex worker who was raped and murdered, Hande Kader. Uh, she was mutilated, her burned body was found and in, 22 a, years in Istanbul old. on August the 8th. She was a sex worker in her early 20s, um, last seen entering a client's car. But there was a, was an, we have another picture because there was a huge protest about this in Istanbul. There uh, she is. She was a great activist. She showed up at all sorts of uh, uh, protest marches. She was a terrific local activist and this is actually a picture of her at a previous when they tried to hold the pride march and the cops came after them this was her at that march. Yes. Uh, and, and then the this is the protest after her murder. Conducted by Transgender Europe and they say that Turkey has the highest murder rate for transgender women in Europe. Uh, in the Church of England, uh, part of the Anglican Communion, a group of gay clergy are going to reveal that they're married with partners. You tell us we couldn't do it, we're doing it. Do your worst. <laughs> Uh, and in Mexico this weekend, uh, in Cuernavaca, they're holding the first national LGBT conference. We'll send you any reports we have on that. Indonesia, the right wing, is suing to restrict our rights, and in Uganda... Well, they're trying to re... Uh, they're trying to really reimpose uh, Sharia law uh, across the board For in Indonesia. For gays and straights. Uh, in all sorts of ways, and criminalizing gay sex is just one part of a much broader attempt and there. And sex between unmarried people. Yes, yes. They want to really shut it down in Indonesia. They are afraid of, you know, liberalizing influences, and there's a strong, strong right-wing uh, movement to uh, to take the country backwards, and in, Uganda, in, our, in our view. And in Uganda, the, the, the Minister of Ethics and Integrity is paying $771,000 to, to a Korean firm to give them the technology to entrap gays uh, using electronic means and all this kind of stuff. I, I thought they just used Grindr. Well, basically, but, yeah. you know, okay. All right, uh, AIDS news. Yes. Uh, in Australia, they are doing a new HIV prevention campaign, and they're targeting trans guys, among others, uh, with information. That's the picture there. Yeah, uh, that's one of their advertising images. Uh, in the United States, uh, the Human Rights Campaign and the Whitman Walker Clinic have just published a new Safer Sex for Trans Bodies guide. If you check out HRC's website or the Whitman Walker Clinic, I'm sure you can get that. And you in California are facing this Proposition 60 to sue people in pornography who don't wear condoms. It gives you the right to sue people in condoms. And pornography who don't wear condoms. So this is brought by the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, which is and another rare, Michael Weinstein production. A zealot, and uh, so it's being fought by LGBT groups, AIDS groups, uh, non-gay groups. Uh, the California and Dem Democratic and Republican parties are against this. 
Uh, in Detroit, uh, the Ruth Ellis Center, which is a community yeah. center named after that great uh, longtime activist, Ruth Ellis, is partnering, partnering with the Henry Ford Health System to open the first health care facility focused on LGBTQ youth. So that's going to be a great thing in Detroit. Yeah. And uh, Gilead is now uh, openly pushing Trufada and PrEP awareness. They used to pay other people to do it. Uh, and they've launched a new website, PreventHIV.com. Uh, now, if we could only get them to lower the price <laughs> that would be of nice. Truvada, yeah, because it works. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, entertainment news. Well, I'm very happy to see that the new uh, watered down version of Ben Hur has been a flop at the box office. <laughs> yes. Well, this was an interesting story. Did they degay it? Yes. Because it turns out, this is a remake of the big Charlton Heston uh, epic. Well, it's, but they've been making films of it since about 1910. But it turns out that the Charlton Heston version uh, was written by Gore Vidal, and Gore Vidal added his own homoerotic subtext to it. Well, he went to Stephen Boyd, who was playing Masala, and said, look, you're having trouble with the relationship with Ben-Hur there, with Charlton Heston. Uh, you were lovers when you were kids. That's, <laughs> so play it that way. And when you watch the scene, yeah, it's quite but evident. He, he didn't tell Charlton Heston <laughs> oh, no. this, and after this story came out, Charlton Heston was quite upset about it. But Charlton Heston was also upset when people said Michelangelo was gay, and he played Michelangelo in the agony and the ecstasy. Poor Charlton Heston. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so this is. Uh, if you look at the Charlton Heston Ben Hur, it yeah. is extremely homoerotic <laughs> and very entertaining. So now <laughs> along comes a religious group that wants to remake Ben-Hur, but they can't get the rights from uh, the movie studio, uh, MGM, to remake the film, uh, remake the film, so they have to go back to the book. A the, the book is Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ. <laughs> yes, exactly. Jesus, Jesus is a figure in it. There's much more, Je well, Jesus is seen from the back in the Charlton Heston version, but G there's a lot more Jesus in this version. But they had to go back to the book, and it doesn't have the homoerotic uh, subtext. So they put out this film, and it it was flopola at the Dude, box so office. I, I heard that the uh, action sequences were okay, but that's about it. <laughs> well, but there's no more homoerotic subtext uh, as a reason to see it. Chris Cooper has a movie review up at cfcooper.net of The People versus Fritz Bauer, a dramatized account of the post-war hunt for Adolf Eichmann, with a significant gay subplot. I'll be interested to see that. Yeah, but he didn't like the movie. Well, just saying. <laughs> well, He's got a review up. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, don't hide the fact that he didn't like the movie. What he did like was Sausage Party, <laughs> uh, which is an R-rated cartoon that I've heard a lot of good things about and uh, has a can lot of gay stuff. Can you say Sausage Party on Gay USA? Of course you can. <laughs> uh, and I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> But Sausage Party, Chris Cooper liked. And Chris spent a lot of time this weekend at FlameCon in Brooklyn. This is the LGBT uh, answer to Comic-Con. Because a lot of it, when you go to a lot of the comic conventions, you get a lot of uh, straight guys who were not very sympathetic, some of them, to uh, gay people. Right. So this is a place where you can go be yourself, as you will see from the photos that we're going to show you. <laughs> well, you there's can be someone yourself. dressed up as the FlameCon symbol. Very attractive. This uh, convention, by the way, is produced by Geeks Out, which is the uh, LGBT uh, technology uh, types. Chris this says you can be yourself, you can let your hair down. Well, this is Wonder Woman, whose hair is somewhat down, <laughs> but looking uh, very fierce. And there's uh, Robin from Batman and Robin. Yes, wearing a skimpier costume even really? than, uh, I think so. I think that's a little skimpier uh, on the bottom than uh, Robin in the TV show or movies okay. more, but what do I know? All right. So uh, uh, what did he say? He said the, uh, the highlights were an openly gay f a famed artist, Phil Jimenez, uh, known as Wonder Woman, and comic book writers Greg Pak, uh, who's behind the latest incarnation of the Hulk, and Chris Claremont, who turned X-Men into the comic's juggernaut. It is today. Uh, there's controversy about a new movie called Reassignment. Michelle Rodriguez is, uh, who did that boxing movie, uh, is uh, a hitman who is tricked into trans surgery. 
and the surgery itself is depicted very violently. So all of this is, and then seeks revenge for the surgery. So the trans community is really not happy with this movie, and uh, that is not getting recommendations. I was happy with a play that I saw this week at the Mint Theater. I'm, I'm very fond of the Mint. They're now uh, uh, at home at 410 West 42nd Street. Uh, it's called A Day by the Sea uh, by a playwright named N.C. Hunter from 1953. There's a shot of it. It, he's sort of an English Chekhov. It's a fine ensemble under the direction of the guy I call the Iron Man of the New York Theater, Austin Pendleton. The guy never stops working. <laughs> uh, George Moore Fogan, who's 83, stands out as the elderly Uncle David. Uh, so I'd say stay with one. It's, it's two hours and 50 minutes long. Very strong second act. Nah. Uh, okay. Now, we told you last week about Tracy Norman. Tracy mm -hmm. Norman, uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, was a very popular and successful model in New York, uh, but when it came out that she was transgender, suddenly she lost her career. Yes. Uh, and I, I at, had, at Clairol and right? other places yes. too. And I remember hearing when I was in college in the '60s and in New York first in the '70s about trans models, and I thought, oh wow, this is a whole new world I hadn't heard of, but. Well, uh, it, there was no Gay USA show then. <laughs> uh, and that's about the last time there wasn't a Gay USA show. Yes, exactly. Uh, so the story that came out last week was that uh, Clairol, which had uh, stopped using Tracy Norman all those years ago, had heard about her and this story and decided to look her up and rehired her to do a new campaign for Clairol. And so we told you that last week, but now we've come across the a little video that Clairol made as part of their campaign. This is a Clairol video, but it's really a charming look at Tracy Norman and her story, and so we thought we would show you that. I love to, what I say, float when I walk because the fabric is blowing in the wind and it just makes me feel beautiful. We are in the Pierre Hotel where I came in on a meeting with Irving Penn and Italian Vogue and I started working immediately. Once I signed my contract with Clairol back in the late 70s, I was on their hair color box Born Beautiful. My color was dark auburn, box 512. It was exciting because I saw my face in drugstores everywhere and my work started picking up more and more. When I was 18, I graduated from high school. My mom, she was very excited for me. That's when I proceeded to tell her my truth. My mother, being a mother, of course she knew, and what she did was open up her arms, told me she loved me, and supported me throughout my entire life. Back in the 70s, it was a different world, especially for transgender women, because I was working as a female model. For me, personally, I had to hide my truth, because if I was to tell, I'm sure that I would get fired. But that day came. I started working also for a magazine. I was on the set. Suddenly, someone came in the door, and that person called the editor over to him, and they had a conversation. It just started feeling very negative. She decided to close the set and send everybody home, and that was the day that uh, my truth was revealed. And, um, yeah, my work stopped right after that. A few months ago, I received a phone call. The person on the other line wanted me to come in to meet some clients for a job. They were from Clairol, and they were interested in bringing me back. And at the time, I just had so many different emotions going through me. I was being accepted for who I was and they wanted me to come back as that person and not be something other than what I, what I truly am. A woman of color, of course. 
The nice and easy color that I'm using today is 6N by Clairol. It seems to soften my features, which I absolutely love. Don't be afraid to live your truth. And if an opportunity knocks, go for it. It's good to be back, and it's really good to be me. Very, very uh, great to see someone triumphing. Yes. Getting another chance. Yes. And we have a young person who's coming out. Uh, it's Disney star Bella Thorne. She came out as bisexual on Tuesday just by answering a fan who said, what's up with you kissing the girl? And she said, are you bisexual? And she said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's been, she broke out on Disney Channel's Shake It Up and has appeared on MTV's Scream, the TV series, and the two, two, 2015 movie The Duff. Uh, and she's very appreciative of all these supporting trusts. It turns out she's dating, uh, let's get this right, um, she recently broke up with her boyfriend, Greg Sulkin, uh, in order to start dating her brother, Remy Thorne's ex-girlfriend, who's also named Bella, Bella Pendergast. There's oh, some gossip Two Bellas, you. that's tougher. Bella, than, Bella. Than, yeah. Uh, well, great. You know, the younger generation, they're more relaxed about this. Yes. Is that our fault? <laughs> <laughs> and in the older generation, I see Jennifer Holliday is going to take over as Suge Avery in The Color Purple on October 4th. That could be exciting. And some late-breaking news I just saw while we were watching the film. Uh, India is looking to ban surrogacy for foreigners and gay couples. That's not nice. No. And what's your uh, Donnie McClurkin? Oh, G Donnie McClurkin is the very, he's the homosexual uh, a guy who's been saved by Jesus. He's 56, big gospel star. Who and was he campaigning for? Was it uh, uh, yeah, horrible, uh, McClay horrible. And McCain uh, years just, ago? Just horrible. Yeah. But uh, he, uh, he is now dating gospel singer Nicole McMullen. Uh, he said the only thing missing in his life is that, uh, is that wife that would make man whole, that element that brings favor to man. Good, Good luck. luck, because you're going to need it. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, well, just in the last uh, couple of minutes we have, let's repeat what we said at the top of the show. Yes, uh, free speech is going into uh, uh, pledge mode on September the 6th through the 25th, so we're going to premiere on Fridays at 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can do the math on where you live. And uh, it'll be repeated on Saturdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Yes. for about Free three speech. weeks. We're three always weeks. online at Gay USA TV. Please sign up for our email list by going to our website, www.gayusatv.org. Yes. And? And uh, we are reaching out to you to let you know that we are open to people telling us they would like to be substitute co-hosts for us. Uh, we might actually get a vacation once in a while. Just show us what you can do yeah. by sending us a tape. Send it to me, Andy, at GayUSATV.org. Uh, make it under five minutes and tell us a little bit about yourself and, again, uh, don't call us, we'll call you. We're looking for a little journalistic uh, savvy and experience. Uh, we can teach you how to do TV. Yes. Uh, but we need hard workers who uh, like to have fun on the air and right. be serious too. And tell people about what's going on in the world LGBT wise. But meanwhile, we will be here next week and we will see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.